Hello people, myself Kaushik. Uh, today I, I just wanted to uh, tell how to write abstract for Smart India Hackathon 2019. First of all, why should you participate in hackathons? Well, because I already mentioned in my previous videos also, uh, the recruitment trend has changed. Okay, If you participate in hackathon, they'll understand that you have coding skills and you, you have the capability to do a work in a stipulated time. Why? Because the, usually hackathons happen for 36 hours or 48 hours or 5 days like that. Okay? There will be a stipulated time. In that time, you need to take an objective and you need to finish it to the uh, final product. So, uh, usually recruiters will understand that if you have participated in a hackathon, you have all round skills. Why? Because it is not only about coding. It is about you present your presentation skills and how you are projecting your product into uh, how you are projecting your product to someone who has come to judge you so these all skills will develop whenever you participate in hackathon first point is that and one more thing smart india hackathon is the biggest hackathon and uh, mhrd is taking it is uh, taking it very seriously why because uh, india has to have more and more number of entrepreneurs so that we can get our jobs very easily we can create the jobs. That is what the main motive of this uh, Smart India Hackathon 2019. And uh, usually uh, the Smart India Hackathon happens in two editions. One is software edition and one more is hardware edition. Uh, you can participate in both or you can participate in one of them. Right? If you, uh, if you just log into uh, Smart India Hackathon page, uh, Smart India Hackathon 2019, then you will find uh, problem statements. You directly go to problem statements and then you have to, there will be some fields, okay, where, uh, which which kind of edition you wanted to do. If you are a computer science or IT background, you can go for software. If you are ECE, mechanical or civil background, then you can go for hardware. And you can have a mix of uh, ECE as well as computer science students so that you can go for software or hardware, okay. So this, this facility is there. Now, whenever you enter into Smart India Hackathon website and into the problem statements, you'll find these fields, software or hardware, which ministry. Usually, like previous editions of Smart India Hackathon, government, uh, there'll be cert, uh, certain divisions in the government, like uh, IT, otherwise uh, postal department, railway department. Likewise, there are so many fields in the government uh, departments. Uh, what they'll do is, whatever uh, problems they have, they'll, they'll pose them as an abstract. Like, they have some problems in their departments, and they pose those problems as an abstract to the students so that what student can do is if they can propose some solution to those problems then they if, if that is very good they'll take them into consideration and they'll make them to start their own uh, own startup to solve those kind of problems so this is what usually happened happens in smart india hackathon uh, till last edition only government problems were given to solve the so, to solve the problems which they which are they have posed but from this year, what Smart India Hackathon 2019 has done is they have uh, private organizations also have involved. They also have given some problems to solve. Okay, so you'll find two fields uh, like ministries and otherwise government companies. So if you if you choose software or hardware regard, regardingly, you'll get your uh, uh, problems, which are problems they have posed by government or by private organizations. So based on that, you have to choose like there will be uh, divisions also and this time they have given abstract also a little abstract about the problem and then some uh, some uh, private agencies and government agencies have given youtube link also to clearly understand the problem so this is what you will find and uh, this time they have categorized the problems also into simple complex and complexity okay based on the uh, problem they have again categorized into simple complex and complexity so all these things you'll find whenever you just press the problem statements and as per your uh, uh, skill set you can go for software or otherwise hardware when you choose these fields you'll find the table of uh, uh, contents where you'll find uh, the ministry or uh, company whichever has given the problem and the problem actual problem title and uh, regarding that abstract and video regarding that okay and in the last column you'll find simple complex or complexity so what you people have to do is you have to look into um, all the problems and whichever fields you can solve that then you can choose the problem and you can give the solution to that problem right so that is what i said government and private organizations have given the problems we, uh, from which you can select them 
and whichever uh, whichever you feel that you can give a proper solution to them then you can choose them and coming to the teams already you might have seen the advertisement it should have uh, six members in which one female should be there okay that is mandatory for women empowerment and then the last date for this uh, proposal submission is 20th okay 20th is the last date to, to submit the proposals next each team yeah uh, there is a there is a question from all the students uh, how many proposals a team can submit yes you can submit n number of proposals but only thing is the team whichever you have chosen the six members should be same for all the proposals which you are giving let us suppose you have formed six member team with one female candidate okay same team can go for two or three proposals okay then you can submit them under the same application okay and next as i already said uh, software and hardware will be there if you uh, if you are like this is this is this uh, if you submit your proposal they'll take some time and they'll uh, announce the results if you have if you are under software category okay you'll be directly going to the finals if your proposal gets selected then you can directly go into the finals for software edition but in the hardware what you need to do is if your proposal gets selected you have to uh do a working model otherwise uh, proof of concept okay you have to do a working model you have to make a video you have to upload it again then again a panel of uh, smart india hackathon will sit and look into your videos and if the video is uh, good then again they'll select you to the finals that is for the hardware so software direct to the finals if your proposal gets selected you are direct you are directly uh, enter into the finals and if you are into hardware two rounds will be there second round will be you have to do the prototype make a video and upload and after that you go into the finals and you will participate so this is what the important points which you need to consider right now the problem comes uh, in writing the abstract so many students have questions how to write the abstract we have seen the problem we have chosen the problem but we are not understanding how to write the proposal or abstract for that particular problem right so already smart india hackathon has given a proper format for doing this uh that is what i am explaining here uh what this it is the proposal or abstract should not exceed 3 or 5 slides 5 is maximum but if you can put your abstract or proposal in 3 slides 3 uh, slides then it will be good otherwise you can go up to 5 slides not more than that why because um, many many proposals will come it will be very difficult for them to analyze the problems okay so 3 to 5 slides is the um, limit okay now how to go about the abstract first you need to like you have chosen some problem and you know how to uh, give a solution for that what you can do is you if you make some survey what are the existing systems are there like uh, let us suppose you have taken up a project called ocean cleanup okay uh, there is so much of plastic and uh, so much of debris uh, in the ocean and which you if which you need to clear okay now what you need to see is how much uh, like, otherwise what are the efforts already made to clean up the oceans or rivers or lakes whatever it is okay so what are the uh, what are already available solutions to clean these things you need to look into it first once you look into them then what you can understand is what are the disadvantages in that existing system okay now once you do the survey then you start writing the uh, introduction part in the introduction part you need to give the statistics like what how much wastage is there or uh, what is the solution already local solutions are there what are the existing solutions are there and this kind of introduction first you need to give and three or four lines you need to finish it off then what is your proposed system you already mentioned the existing systems are there and there are some disadvantages in the existing systems now what is your proposal what kind of proposal you are giving to solve that solution and to en enhance the existing model so this is what your proposed system next you are you are choosing a proposed system what is a technology stack third point is technology stack like if i am working in hardware uh, am i using arduino or am i using raspberry pi am i using some sensors like any sensor if uh, dependent on your problem statement uh, the sensors will vary okay so that is what you have to mention in the technology stack what technology you are using if it is software java artificial intelligence cnn python that and all will come under picture and if you are working in uh, ece or mechanical or civil other sensors or otherwise any concrete material or some anything regarding your proposal what all technology you are using that will come under your technology stack that you have to mention then use case diagram 
Now you have proposed a model which solves the uh, solution, which solves the problem. Okay, for that, who are the users? That is use case diagram. You can always uh, survey. You can always Google it. How the use case diagram looks like. The basic purpose of this use case diagram is the proposed model, whichever you have proposed. Who are all using it? Uh, like citizens are using, our government is using, our municipal is using. So you have to mention who all are using, who all can use your proposed prototype, and you need to give one line explanation about each and every user. Okay, this is about use case diagram. Then showstopper. Like uh, let us suppose uh, I am working for a uh, traffic uh, control management with the help of CCTV camera. Now uh, whenever I propose some system to that. I I don't buy any CCTV camera and I'll, uh, I I don't stand in the traffic to get the pictures. Already available CCTV images will be there that we will take and we uh, we propose our uh, artificial intelligence or something else on that image and based on that I control the uh, traffic lights. Okay, this is what if, if if this is what if you have proposed then if you are not provided with the CCTV images then it will be a showstopper for your proposal. You should understand this showstopper. Okay, if Like you have proposed some system, and if you are not provided with uh, some data to that particular system, then it will be a showstopper for your proposal. So that is what you have to mention in this showstopper. Okay, this is how you have to write your abstract or proposal so that it will be very clear for anyone to understand what the existing system is, what you have proposed, what is the technology stack you are using. And who are the users you are uh, uh, using your prototype, and what is the showstopper? If you mention the showstopper, then government will take initiative in providing some data to you, so that your proposal will not get stuck in the middle. Right. And then last important point is SPOC. Uh, SPOC stands for single point of contact. Every college will have one or two SPOCs. Okay. Uh, you need to meet SPOC two times. One is Uh, you all know the rules, I guess. You have to get a consent letter from the college, and then you have to team leader has to register in the Smart India Hackathon portal. Okay, once he registered and he has to give the teammate's name, then he has to go to SPOC. That is one time, so that SPOC will activate your account. So uh, he'll uh, he'll uh, just uh, I mean he'll uh, he'll activate in such a way that these are the students of our college. Next, once you uh, get the activation from your SPOC. Then you will have a chance to upload your abstract or proposal. Once you again upload, then again you have to go to Spark so that Spark will verify your abstract. Why? Because Spark will verify whether it is in a proper way or whether it is in a proper uh, format which is given by Smart India Hackathon. And then only he will activate so that he will go to Smart India Hackathon panel. So you have to meet your Spark two times: one for the uh, team registration, another one, uh, another for the. Your proposal submission and looking into uh, Spark will look into your uh, proposal and then he'll make it uh, activated so that it'll go to Smart India Hackathon panel. So this is what about uh, Smart India Hackathon. Uh, they have kept twentieth is the last date. This is hard deadline, right? Uh, today is already thirteenth. So fast enough so that you can finish off uh, your abstract and uh, then you can go for. And for Sparks, fifteenth is the last date. For uh, any faculty has to become a SPOC in your college. Fifteenth is the last date for SPOC registration. After that, it is not allowed. Okay. So if you have any queries or any doubts regarding Smart India Hackathon 2019, you can always uh, WhatsApp me or uh, you can always put a comment in the YouTube section so that I can help. Thank you.